You can skip this intro or you can click on the link in the description below and get your own professional deep tissue body butter. It is all natural, organic, handcrafted, vegan, paraben free, cage free, gluten free, lactose free, and drama free. Your hands will thank you. Before we get started, this is an anatomy video, and in the spirit of science, the only thing that's going to get exposed here are some awesome facts about the psoas and the iliacus. Let's go. So the psoas and the iliacus are incredibly strong hip flexors. They lie very deep in the body and are attached to the anterior portions of the spine, the sacrum, the ilium, which is one of your hip bones, and the femur. These two muscles are often referred to together as the iliopsoas. The iliacus is named for its large attachment on the anterior portion of the ilium, and the word psoas is derived from the ancient Greek meaning of the loin. They can be found underneath your guts, so if you were to make an incision and push aside your abdominal muscles and then pull out all of your intestines, there they would be. I'm not sure I'm liking this femur though. And voila, no leg. While I reestablish the femur and start to give these bones a little definition, let me point out that the psoas and the iliacus are probably one of the biggest sources of controversy in the world of bodywork. Depending on who you talk to, there are so many different schools of thought about whether or not you should work on them, how you should work on them, and what their contribution is exactly to back pain. Before I paint the muscles, you can start to see how the hip is not just where the femur articulates with the pelvis, but also where the ilium articulates with the sacrum and where the sacrum articulates with the spine and so on and so forth. Anatomically speaking, this is one of the most complicated parts of the body at the core of who we are. So dysfunction here is far from uncommon. I'm starting with the iliacus, which is a pretty thick stocky muscle and lies deep to the psoas. Palpating this muscle can be tricky, but one of the main obstacles is the inguinal lymph nodes that lie right in the front of the hip, so navigate around those with caution. You might even be able to envision here, with the insertion on the lesser trochanter on the medial aspect of the femur, that this muscle doesn't only flex the hip, but also brings the leg out into external rotation. The psoas, which I'm starting to paint now, is longer and skinnier and a little more superficial. It's technically called the psoas major, and there is a psoas minor, but only in about 40% of the population. As I start to separate out the fibers of these muscles with white paint, it's important to remember that the white paint represents connective tissue, and that connective tissue wraps around each of the fibers, and then on a bigger scale wraps around the entirety of each of the muscles so that when these two muscles eventually come together, they are connected to each other and form an incredibly strong attachment down onto that lesser trochanter. For the most part, with the origin fixed, these two muscles are gonna bring the leg up to the torso, and then flipping it, if the insertion is fixed, it's gonna bring the torso down to the leg. And we know that we can train muscles to do whatever we want. So if you think about it, if we sit at our computers for hours on end, or sit in the car for way longer than we really want to, these muscles are gonna to start to get chronically short and decidedly weak. Sometimes a shortening in these muscles can cause a hyperlordotic curve, which can be problematic for the posterior low back muscles, but sometimes if these muscles are really strong, they can give a person a pretty remarkable ability to leap tall objects or do some pretty impressive dance moves. Either way you look at it, these two muscles are amazing cogs in our human machine. 